There's a lot going on in this page that we're frankly looking at. Remember that C strings are character arrays. And we've already talked about arrays. We've looked at arrays. We've looked at for loops when associated with arrays, especially if you've been with me. So there are some similarities or same properties and some of the same things that we've already covered from before. And I've already kind of denoted that in some of the previous pages that we've had in this overall lecture. Now, when C strings are used in functions, it's going to look like a normal array that we're passing in. So if you look at our prototypes here, we have our care, which is the, let's remember, each element is a character, our name of the array, and then some type of length that we're going to pass in there. So that looks familiar from the other arrays that we've had before. That gives us a pointer to the first element of the string, which hopefully we went over a little bit in arrays. So if not, pointers is going to be coming up pretty soon. And then changes to the string inside the function affect the actual string. And there's no need for the ampersand. The ampersand gives us direct access. Well, with, with an array in C and C++, it already gives us direct access. What do I mean by that? So what's going to happen here is, is that I'm going to be passing in a very simple string of Lupoli and then converting it to all stars. So I have to pass in the array, has to have some values in it, has to be able to count the length of the string inside of that character array, and then it's going to loop through and replace each one of those items with a star instead. So from here on out, that string is now permanently changed from Lupoli to stars. How do I do that? And that's, well, it's a segment of code here. So I have two distinct functions that I will go over here slowly. Number one is just to display the array. Remember, with an array, even from the integers and floats that we showed you from before, we couldn't display it really nice. We, we had to use a for loop to go through the entire array to go ahead and display. It. Now, this is a string this time. This is a, this is a character string. So we're going to use that string length function because remember, at the back end of Lupoli is that backslash zero if we're treating it as a, as a string. So we're going to use that to our advantage. And that's what string length does for us. Here's the other part. Go ahead and see out the index of x of at i. We've covered that before. It's nothing crazy in the see outs in between. I think it might be a little bit more interesting is maybe some of the functions. Maybe we haven't gone over that yet, but this function kind of looks like the main, right? This function is going to be, well, our housing for just displaying the array. And in parentheses here is what we are exactly passing into it. We are naming the actual function display array. And this function is actually going to return nothing back to us. It's still going to do some work, but it's not going to return any of value back to us. So that is the display array. It's basically passing in Lupoli right here. Our name length is going to be 20, and there's Lupoli. And again, because it's a character array, it's going to put that backslash zero at the end of it. We're going to then pass name, which is being also highlighted here. We're physically passing name into display array. And that's how we know what this is Lupoli. So that's part one. Hopefully you got all that. The next part. I am then, after I've displayed it, I'm going to use the pad array. And that's this last one down here that has the blinky dot on there. But anyway, what this is going to do, notice the for loops look pretty similar here. The only thing that's different is that for every single index at i, we are going to replace it. Now, I can use the equal sign because it's just a simple character with a star that you see basically here. And remember, by the way, it uses string length again. So it's going to look at L, replace that with a star. U, with a star. P, replace. O, all the way down. And then when it hits that backslash zero, it goes, ah, we're done. So it'll stop right at that spot. So that's how I get away with the pad array, using that for loop, doing the same thing over and over again until I hit the string length. And then I actually go back to display array again, and now it's going to display what we just put in there. And that string is now stuck with stars unless I string cat it, unless I string copy it, or I individually set letters or characters in the array. Character array, which is, again, You'll see character array, which equals my C string. So yeah, got to be careful about that. But I wanted to make sure you understand 
hey, what's going on? Might be introducing some new concepts with functions here and there. So breathe, take it in. And again, let me know if you have any questions, but this is a biggie when it comes to character arrays and parameters.